Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our Factorio Space Age playthrough. We are on Vulcanus now. We got going with some of this beautiful molten iron stuff, which has been so easy to just make all of the steel and iron, and we need to do copper next and whatnot, but yeah, makes things pretty easy. Um, we're gonna need more of everything though, and we're kind of starting from the ground up. And unlike Fulgora, where we get the scrap providing us with a lot of the resources we need kind of already done, we're gonna have to make it all the normal way here. Um, we do have a little bit of a to-do list. So we're working towards two orange science per second is my goal. And then we wanna produce uncommon foundries and higher. I just figure we might as well start with that. And then big drills. Uh, and then the SS Derpamu, that's Patreon supporter randomized list. If you want to get your name on the random list, you can do that. We're going to be naming spaceships after Patreon supporters. Um, anyway, we want to get another ship going because basically this one is going to be the one that goes to and from Fulgora, and I want to set up a different one to go to and from Vulcanus. Now, I technically could just use the same one, but I think having another space platform will be nice. So, on Nalvis, I did go ahead and automate the starter pack. The, what's it called? Space platform starter pack, I think is the full name. So we've got that done over here. Apparently, I put it right next to the cargo landing pad. That's funny. I did not even see what this was when I put that there. Uh, and we also kind of automated recycling of gun turrets if we don't have enough uncommons. So this is kind of going to continually roll over and over and over again to get uncommon turrets for the new platform. And let's see. It looks like we need more iron on that belt. Where's my second iron belt? Right here. So I kind of need... Well, I guess it looks like I'm using all my iron right now, but ideally we need the ability for this iron to be more than just a red belt. But that's not easy to do. We'll take this. We'll wrap it back around. We'll make a gap here. And then we'll bring this up merge and that should get us up to a blue belt of iron now from what was just two red belts and that'll send slightly more down that way okay um, and then so yeah orange science is the goal which means we're going to need to get going with a bunch of basics. We're going to need a bot mall here. And we could make a belt mall, but that just sounds terrible when we have logistics bots. So <laughs> so we're going to get logistics bots going. Um, we've already got iron and steel. And so next we want to automate copper production, which I will just do similarly to what we did with... Wait, no, that's the wrong recipe. We want the copper from lava. This one. And then the lava will come down. And then I think we have more foundries. I need to put these in my logistics request. Apparently I already have them? What? Oh, I accidentally clicked over my stone trashing. That's weird. Um... Stack size is 20. I had the icon and I clicked on my stone trashing icon and that actually overwrote the numbers. I didn't know it did that. It's kind of interesting. Uh, anyway, yeah, bring me bring me foundries. I thought we had a few extras, did we not? Maybe not. What's up, Mono Pom Pom? We'll get your name in game here in a minute. How's your day going? All right, well, that's a lot of excess here. We'll do a third of that, how about? Uh, 
Yeah, Dave, you can you can drag these. Um, now, unfortunately, you can't drag to a different group. That is the sad part. But you can at least reorder them within the same menu. Okay, so green chips. Green chips is what we need. And so what we're going to do is we're going to grab our EMP basic mall. Um, where do I want my bot mall? I think for now we're going to have it close-ish to the cargo pad. Uh, we can always move some stuff later, but... But yeah, we're going to need green circuits here. And we're just going to let that mostly fill up. Doesn't need a fluid. And then we're going to cast the cables with a foundry as well. So I'm going to need to feed just a few more circuits into here to get a few more foundries. And we should be able to cast the copper cables with copper, molten copper. Um, why am I not... What's going on with the carbide? Oh, right. I'm not mining tungsten ore yet. That's the problem. Right. Uh, we need a big drill, which can only be made in a foundry. Surprisingly does not need lubricant. I guess it requires electric engine units, so that's kind of already representing the lubricant. Um, and then... Please tell me I brought pumps. Uh, I think I did, but I forgot to send them down. That means I need to make an engine unit. Um, so many little little things you forget about. So let's make an engine unit. That much I can handle. You're thrilled to hop into Space Age after a long workday? Well, congratulations on your workday being over and you can enjoy some Space Age for yourself. Oops, seems we're out of power. Yeah, I need a few pumps. I do find it kind of odd that you don't need any sort of high temperature pipe for the molten stuff. Or even just like insulated pipe or something like that. Um, I think Vulcanus feels too easy to put it another way. Granted, maybe Fulgora, I don't know. But Gleba seems like it's going to be fairly difficult. But Vulcanus is like, oh my gosh, you just get infinite resources in like two seconds. I mean, it's nuts. It's nuts. But at the same time, they're all power. Like, Fulgora is very powerful too, but it felt like on Fulgora you had to work a little bit harder for it. Here it kind of feels like it's just handed to you on, on a silver platter. Um, the reason I'm pumping into this is so that we're kind of prioritizing, in a way, the production of drills, the molten iron we need for drills. So now I need electric engine units, which also need lube. Um, so I'll put them here. And... Of course, we need circuits and engines for that. And you cannot make engines in a foundry. Worth noting. There's no cast engines here. How many do I need per drill? You need 10 for one drill. So we're going to have to make a fairly large electric engine factory, which I'm probably going to want to use modules for, which means we're going to need to make a big module factory, which probably means we're going to need more uh, whatchamacallits. I, I don't know why I can't think of the name. Um, the electromagnetic plants. Now, what's going on on Nalvis? It does seem like we just need faster rocket launches. It's just, it takes a while to fulfill all the requests. 
This will probably be the one I end up sending to Gleba first, since it's kind of got all the basics already requested. I might add some more pipes to it, because Gleba's going to have a lot of pipes. I might add... What were we lacking? Yeah, see there, the pumps. We did have pumps, I just forgot to send them down to the planet. Um... I feel like we forgot something, but I don't remember what it was. Probably should go to 20 robo ports. And. More solar? We can request a full rocket, that's fine. If we end up with too much stuff, we can add a few more cargo cargo bays. Actually, those are requests I don't need to make anymore. I wish you could send half down. Is there a way to do that? Shift right click, control right click. No, you can't. You can't just send half. That feels really wrong. Because you can't pick this up and drop like one at a time in there. So you actually, if you want to send half of your buildings down, you can build half of them, but then, I don't know, that, that's weird. That's weird. Um, all right, let's get these big drills. Do we have enough? I guess we gotta output this. You might be able to right click single items into the trash. Mm, you can't pick up the, the stack though. Like, I'm left-clicking and it doesn't do anything. So you left and right-click literally do nothing, clicking on these. The only thing you can do is pipette, but then that doesn't actually grab them. So, that's a little weird. Yeah, we also need more solar here. Uh, I guess I could always craft... Uh, once we get copper plates going, which we should have right here. Five makes two. Is that cheaper? Casting copper cable. How much molten do you actually get from, from copper ore, by the way? So copper ore... So each ore gives you 10 molten. Okay. So basically 10 molten would be a plate. So it's the same ratio for plates. But then normally one plate makes two wire. So four wire would be 20 molten copper. But instead, four wire is only 10 molten copper. So copper cable becomes almost free at this point because it's half its normal price on top of getting extra productivity. So we're just gonna be swimming in copper cable is the bottom line to that. All right, and then we need to bring down the calcite. With foundries, everything is free, seems like. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely gonna be pretty easy to make all the plates we'd ever want. Obviously, taking this technology back to Nalvis, things are no longer free. Um, Resource-wise. But, like, the extra productivity is still a huge deal. I'm still not sure if I like this. Um, I like having the tooltips here. 
I actually think I want them to be automatic on the side, but then if I were to click the button, they would pop up at the mouse for the really big ones. Because the problem is some of them on the side are just too big. But I think I'm just so used to being able to mouse over something and see the details without having to click a button. I keep holding my mouse over things, and I'm like, uh, where's information? And then I remember to click. It certainly hasn't gotten default for me yet. It hasn't become default. Um, uh, this is my stone output. Does that reach? It does. Okay, so we'll get rid of the stone. There's molten copper into copper plates and molten copper into copper cable. What's interesting now is copper cables harder to make on site. It's actually, that's interesting. Um, Because I also just realized we have to ship calcite from Vulcanus to, to use molten stuff on Alvis. I didn't realize that before. Um, but yeah, so this is super interesting now because we are going to have... Rather than making cable out of plates wherever we normally make it, Instead, we can make cable twice as productively, and I'm not counting the 50% prod that these already have, because I'm just ignoring that, but like, even more than twice as productively, we get copper cable if we make it out of molten, but the problem is then you have to make the copper cable the same place you're making copper plates, which means we're gonna have to ship cable around. And in that sense, it kind of feels like Item stacking is therefore gonna really save our bacon. Because being able to stack copper cable on like a turbo belt, we can actually have a good throughput. Oh, interesting, Alor. You found a situation where you couldn't even bring up the tooltip. I wonder, now I have shift, I'm not using shift. Um, I have mouse button 5 bound to this as well because I thought shift was going to be annoying. I wanted to have it as a mouse button so then I didn't have to use the keyboard plus the mouse to see a tooltip. So that's certainly helping a little bit for me. Uh, but that only works if you have a 5 button mouse and you're not doing something else with it. But there we go. There's our green chips uh, finished. So now I've got those. Then we need to automate red chips, which is green chips, wire, and plastic. Plastic is gonna be tricky. We're gonna need to use this heavy oil, crack it twice. Um, Joshua, you made a rare tank from Rare Parts. Congratulations on your rare tank, but uh, yeah, it is it is a drag to make rare parts. You know, I think I think people underestimate how difficult it is to use the like making the parts rare is in effect just as expensive as rolling the thing that many times. You just end up being able to use the ones that don't end up rare for something else. Whereas if you roll a tank hundreds of times, you end up with a lot of extra tanks, <laughs> which is what I may or may not have done, as you all remember. Okay, so I need a blueprint for this because I've done this enough times now that you'd think I would have blueprinted it, but we haven't. Oh, I need pipes. What's up, Aranel? How's it going? Um, have we made our first big drill yet? There we go. And we really need pipes. Do I have one more of these? We do. So I should be able to do both types of pipes. 
Is there any point to that, though? It's a total of 15 iron for pipe to ground. Here, it's a total of 15 iron. So, not really. I mean, yes, it's more productive, but, like, how many pipes do you even need in life? At least for automating engines, I really don't think we need to worry about it. Do iron plate, 200. It's now denser to put liquid iron copper on trains. Oh, interesting, yeah, fluid bus. Yeah, it is a lot of steel you need for a tank, Joshua, for sure. Is the YouTube chat working, by the way? Or are we not? I haven't checked yet. It seems like it's working. I haven't actually looked at the screen. Let me see if that's functioning. Uh, okay, so then we want pipe. It is working. Okay, good. Underground pipe. And then we'll just do like four of those. All right, that should do it. Speed that up a little bit. Okay. Uh, and then I need gears. Ah. I kind of wish if there was only one parameter, it would auto select it when you place down, the, like when you place the parameter I built, it's kind of annoying you have to click on that first. I do understand why, because you can also just place a parameterized blueprint with nothing selected. But most of the time you're going to want to be selecting, so it's kind of interesting. And now we should be able to automate solar panels, so let's get that going. ASAP, because we need more power. I could just do steam turbines instead, I feel like they're both pretty effective. Okay, I, I can't handle not having tooltips. Unfortunately, you don't get more, you can't do a mixture. Um, yeah. I wish I could like pull it to the mouse sometimes because I, I think it's just too big. You know, I could always move. I don't know why I haven't thought of this. I could always move myself over a little bit. I guess it, it feels a bit more intrusive maybe, but I can be slightly to the side so that I'm usually not in the way of tooltips. Hey, Maria, welcome, welcome to the live version of Crydax. But yeah, these are making six megawatts a piece. We already determined it's pretty free to do all this. And I don't have to worry about the sulfuric acid running out because we this patch over here is freaking 32,000% combined yield. So <laughs> that's nuts. And there's more tungsten. So we're definitely going to take this territory from Mr. Worm over here at some point. Now, we haven't found any other tungsten. Let me do a search for it. Um, what is this? Oh, there's one tile of ore right there. Cool. Okay, good. There's a big patch up here as well. It's time. Well, I say big. I mean, uh numer the number's big but the actual size is small so we're gonna need some high quality big drills to go fast on that have we killed a worm yet yes we did in the last episode we took down we took down a small worm i almost called it biggest wormist but it's more like smallest 
smallest wormus we were able to murder. Um, I think we found what might be one of the best strategies to kill a worm, to be honest. Like, it was, it was almost too easy. It felt very anticlimactic. <laughs> um, but the trick is this thing right here. Look at the look at the physical damage on that. And you can see that even something like a worm with tens of thousands of health is going to go down pretty fast. Now, granted, we do have eight of the projectile damage upgrades. So I did two of the infinites. Uh, so that helps a lot with cannon shell damage, but still. Okay, so here's this guy. Let's get big power poles attached. To the base. You know what I need is more exoskeletons, now that we have all this space. Oh, we're doing it. We have a big drill. Look at all this space! It's so cool. So... It's like, now we can easily beacon. I'm just trying to think about how we're going to want to do this. So you can use stacking. Like this. And then we can fit beacons in the middle without even doing anything difficult. We can fit beacons like this. Obviously, we can put beacons behind them and then do that. And we still have full coverage. So this is all very nice. Also, can we look over at the side here? Uh, other side. Sorry. my uh, I'm mirrored. So I have to point to my left to for you guys to see me pointing at the right side of the screen. Anyway, do you see resource drain over here? Resource drain of 50% and a productivity of 40% means that I'm making 1.4 ore for every 0.5 ore that is actually being consumed from the patch. So I'm already, and that's without any more, that's without having uncommon drills or anything. I'm already at like triple. So even though this says 153,000 tungsten, I'm going to end up producing almost four and a half thousand, or 450,000 tungsten out of this. And the mining speed is 2.5, which is, is that five times faster than a normal drill? Uh, I don't have a normal drill. Mining speed 0.5 a second. Yeah, so five times faster. Half of the drain. Did I just hear a worm? I did. There is a worm friend over there. Um, all right, we've got some attacks on the Nauvis here. Let's get a few more turrets there. Yeah. I think pollution is actually shrinking right now. But there's still a bit going on because now I'm buffering a whole chest worth of these things. No? No? It's still filling the SS Hendrickson. Jeez. I really need more than two cargo rocket, uh, or rocket silos, I think. Uh, you can't underground through lava? Got it. Yep, that is accurate. That's annoying. Um, we need the rail planner, but for belts. <laughs> Oh, I hope I don't run out of blue belts. No, I think we're okay. I think we brought enough. Uh, so we want to go all the way up. To over here. just I'll just run long inserters there okay there we go so now we've fully automated tungsten carbide why is it so slow tungsten has a mining time of 5x 
So, I did say that these drills are five times faster, but these tungsten ores mine five times slower, so it kind of operates like a normal drill, in fact. Um, this would be a good time for a solar field or two. Let's get that done. Give our robots access here. Do a like, we'll get your name in game soon. Diagonal and elevated belts. Oh my God, imagine diagonal belts. Just imagine it. <laughs> I can't. I can't imagine it. It's horrific to imagine. Oh my gosh. Wow. Alright, do we have enough bots? I don't have any construction bots, I just realized, in the network. That's potentially problematic. I guess we need to give up 50, 50 of our own brood. Okay. All right, so we should be getting automated electric engines now, albeit a bit slowly, but maybe we speed things up a bit with some modules here. Extra power should help a bit. Let's see if we have enough accumulators. Oh, the foundries take way more power than I thought. 2.6 megawatts. They're beastly. Okay. So let me craft more steam turbines. And what did I say? One of these can run 30 steam turbines? That doesn't feel right, but it is. It's absurd. <laughs> you learned recently that fish can spoil. Yeah, yeah, you can get spoilage on Novus. It is, it is possible. Which I think is really cool. We should probably get the rest of this sulfuric hooked up before we get too far into this process of building other things on top of everything. This, for example. There. It is nice to not have to worry about uh, pathing. I can just build the pipes however I want because squeak through is no longer needed because of the mech armor. Okay, so that's good. Oh, there's one more up here. Oh, I'm out of substations. Okay. Um, so I need red chips then, eh? And we're not going to have any plastic. Hmm. I was just starting to think about that over here, and I had said, I need, I need to uh, blueprint this, and then... You see, what happened was, <laughs> I, uh, I didn't because I didn't have the underground pipes. And then we got on a rabbit hole for underground pipes, and here we are. Okay, so this should probably be a blueprint, because I'm going to make this a large number of times throughout my history of things. 
Um, so there's heavy oil. This is going to be light oil to petroleum. Uh, there we go. Water hooked up to each other. <sighs> Loyal can just be hooked up like this. And then oil, as in heavy oil. Loyal, as in light oil, in case that was confusing. Uh, oil is over here. Water. And no, I have no idea if my current water production is enough to handle this, so time will tell. But at least we have the resources uh, to craft stuff. Diagonal belts would allow for artistic spaghetti. That is true. I feel like if you had actual diagonal belts, they would need to somehow take up part of a tile. Like, because obviously it would be, you know, something like that. You would do 45 degrees. Those would be your, your only options. And it would need to take up this tile such that you couldn't build entities on them. But it would need to take up that tile such that you could have another diagonal belt here and the, the two diagonal belts would be able to be next to each other. But this tile wouldn't be able to have anything on it other than like another part of a diagonal belt. I feel like that could work. Kind of like the way uh, concrete actually looks would be how they work. So like you wouldn't be able to build anything there, but you could build another diagonal belt here and they would share that spot. That's my that's my brief on how diagonal belts would work. I'm sure there's about 500 more problems you need to solve for them to actually work right. <laughs> but this should get us petroleum gas. And we can do beaconing and modules and stuff later. I'm just trying to get it done. Um, because I would like to make plastic. And that'll be next to our coal. So let's make plastic up here. I'm also out of chemical plants now. There's all sorts of problems. I don't know why I've made everything so far away. I could have built it however I wanted. Why did I build the plastic? Well, I guess I wanted to build it close to the coal. But why did I build my oil processing so far away from the coal then is the next question. And the answer is, I don't know. I'm just going by feel. And that doesn't always provide the best results. <laughs> um, Alright. But, on the plus side, bada bing bada boom. Plastic. And now that's done, now we should be able to make red circuits. In other news, you tried to make a sushi pipe cracking setup. Ooh, fun. Fun, fun, fun. Joshua, did you get a rare modular armor? Or are you just talking about the tank equipment grid? Because the, the the rare tanks got a huge equipment grid. It is so nice. It is very nice. Uh, I do not want to request 50 copper. I meant to just trash more than 50. Um, yeah. Yeah, the tank is a much stronger vehicle overall since the changes. I, I like it a lot, actually. Okay, it seems like power is fine now that I added these extras, and this thing is fine. Can I add prod into this? No, okay. I was curious if I could. That would be even more nutty. But the cryogenic plant can use it. Oh, but the cryogenic plant doesn't come with inherent prod. It just has a lot of slots for the things that work with prod. OK, 
can't you use filtered pumps, Alor, to make that work? Or do pumps still connect? Does a pump still consider the thing on the front of it to be the same network, even if it's turned off? Okay, we certainly need more. More big drills. Um, what's the current holdup? We don't have a requester chest for them. That could that could slow things down. Oh, and I need regular drills to be somewhere around here too. I'm pretty close to wanting to do a make anything machine. Like more specifically a make what's needed by the the requests in the network machine. I'm not quite ready to to make it. It could take it could take me a while cuz I kind of have no idea what I'm doing with it. So yeah. Um, okay, we're making solar panels. Excuse me. Okay, uh, more gears. Oh, I need to be casting gears. What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? I can cast all the gears we want right here. make like about 10 billion of them so let's do that perfect and we can stop making gears like a caveman in an assembling machine and believe it or not we are not getting fast enough iron plates so let's speed that up a good bit Always add a second one. Uh, yes, you can cast pipes. <laughs> yeah, Joshua, I wonder how much me having to roll 230 tanks to get my rare tank slowed down my progress to space. <laughs> Certainly didn't help things. Um, okay, we need a requester chest for this guy, too. I know I can cast um, sticks, but I, I'm just trying to get things running. This is the bootstrap uh, Vulcanus setup. This is not the final. This is the bootstrap. How much are we talking here? 21.7 a second heavy oil. That's not a lot. Um, I'm used to Fulgora where I can place a, a, what are they called, offshore pump and have 1,200. <laughs> Though, now I basically get copper and iron from offshore pumps, almost. So, I guess you trade one thing for another. So there's another thought about Gleba. I'm always coming back to Gleba. About why people might not like Gleba or why Gleba doesn't sound as nice. I think some of it's because you don't you can't just print resources there. There's nothing that just prints itself for free. You know, on Fulgora, all you have to do is set up scrap into recyclers and an offshore pump, and now you have infinite heavy oil, steel, low density structures, solid fuel, blue chips, red chips. You know, a few other things I can't remember. Ice for water. Like, you've got all that stuff, and you've only done two things. And then here, you get an offshore pump with lava, and then you just grab a few of the basic ores lying around, the calcite. And now you've got infinite stone, iron, copper already set up in these buildings that make plates and stuff super fast. And Gleba has what? Like, yeah, now, after the changes, you can get iron and copper from processing the bacteria, but there's not, like... I don't know, it's just a very different feel, I think. I'm excited for it, I actually am, but it, it, it is a little bit less enticing, I think, partially because there's no, like, 
resource printing going on. And I think that actually makes a big difference. Now I'm going to hedge a wager, wage a hedger, that this is actually enough solar for the ratio that this planet needs. Um, I actually bet that it is. So I'm just gonna paste this like so. <laughs> and we're just gonna let the bots sort it out. Now I'm not making batteries, but that's pretty easy to throw in here. Oh, chemical plants. We need to automate chemical plants. Um, bot mall. Chemical plant. I'll do accumulators there. Chemical plants here. We'll do refineries. What else do we need, y'all? Uh, I haven't done assemblers yet, which also means we're gonna need speed modules. Uh, I need to just hit E more often. E, E. There we go. Um, speed modules can be in the EMP version. Speed ones. Uh, anything else we need? Not oh, substations. Substation. Oop. Didn't mean to do that. I hit E too soon. Right, substation. Okay. Do we want more than one stack of some things? Yes to accumulators. Maybe yes to speed ones. Call it a day. I'm lacking stone brick in the network. You want to see suffering. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if Gleba is as suffering as we expect. The good news is I'm going last, so uh, firepower-wise, I think we're gonna be... we're gonna be okay. Like, I don't think I'm gonna have too much of a problem with the fighting the natives <clears throat> aspect. Assuming we actually prepare properly. Uh, 20... Roboport... Cool. Now what is... I just... I don't know what it is about the way I hold my, my mouse, but sometimes I right-click on accident, and that can be really bad in Factorio. Thankfully, undo exists, so... We're okay. But, uh, what was I about to say? Oh yeah, just like, what is using all my iron plates right now? I actually don't know. Because we're making, oh, I don't have enough molten. I don't have enough molten because I can't ditch the stone fast enough. This is making 6.7 stone per second. Ooh, doggies. Okay, that should get me there. Yeah, I do agree that solving a difficult challenge can be more interesting, and it is kind of annoying. Back to what you said a little bit ago, Dave, I don't know if you're still hanging out, but you were talking about how because rockets kind of can't carry that many buildings, it kind of does incentivize you to make like a bot mall or something on every planet rather than bring buildings from Navis. Uh, I do think that's kind of interesting too. If I had built Navis up bigger, you know, and I had like eight rocket silos, it maybe wouldn't be that hard to just bring stuff from Navis and just have, have the ship on a constant loop coming back and forth. So that it's like, oh, I used up all my belts. I only have to wait maybe 10 or 15 minutes for the next shipment of belts to show up. Um, but that requires you to have a pretty solid Navis base to be able to like produce that much to send back and forth to all your planets. Uh, I guess we need robo ports. Automated. 
here. Yeah, yeah, you do need to make some stuff for the for the buildings on that planet, of course. But I more mean for like assembler threes. Like I could just have the space platform shipping more assembler threes every time it comes, and I could just have it on an automated loop coming back and forth. So that's totally possible. Ooh, what if the bot mall was in space and you had a traveling merchant ship? That wouldn't really work because there's no bots in space, sadly. So moving resource, mo moving the ingredients around in space would be a giant pain in the butt. Cool idea though. What's the issue right now? Green circuits probably. So I do think what's costing most of my iron is is uh, green circuits. So I'll make those a little more productive, and we'll do two of them. And then we'll get more iron automated here. Um, I really want to rush cliff explosives. That's why I didn't care too much about what I was doing here. And... Yeah, I know I have kind of made a mess out of this, haven't I? You cannot send things from a platform to a platform. There's only platform to planet and planet to platform. Sushi belts. Yeah, Josh, you could totally do sushi belts on a space platform. Uh, it would certainly work. Okay. I'm feeling good about this. This is a good beginning. Good beginnings for our Vulcanist base. I think we're kind of self-sufficient now. We do need more tungsten mining, but the drills are waiting on engines, which are waiting on green circuits. No, they're not being provided. Let's speed that up a little bit. And I don't have enough power? No, I do not. Now there's something interesting. The accumulators didn't have enough huh, uh, actual discharge output rate. So... I'm wondering if you actually need more accumulators than you would need for the storage just because of the input and output rate. I'm not sure. It I, it depends on the numbers, and the math is kind of hard to do because I don't know the exact day-night uh, ratio and such. But that is an interesting... Oh, we need substations badly. I'm going to prioritize this guy. And I will also put these robo ports into the network. Okay, hold on. It was satisfying all of my personal requests first, so let's let's let the bots do what they need to do for a minute here. That should help. Even I guess I wasn't requesting speed ones, but. Yeah, we'll just turn off personal requests for a minute. Uh, the ratio, you assumed it's the same. It might be. We don't know that for sure. And the ratio changed anyway on Nalvis. I don't know it, um, if the day-night ratio itself changed or if it was just the total day length timer. Also, Josh, I don't know. Uh, regarding the personal laser defense question, I haven't really used personal laser defense as much. I mostly used the tank for clearing, and by the time I had lasers, I didn't need to do that much clearing. I did have some in my personal armor, and the tank mostly just had shields. 
um, to protect it, but I didn't ever actually end up using a ton of PLD. Definitely need some more coal mining going on. Now what happened here? Oh, it was one of the fire tree things. I bet. Alright, are we making it through the night now with power? I guess we'll find out. Because what was the day-night cycle again? It's like really short, right? Yeah, a minute 30 seconds. It's so bonkers. Gosh, that's... Solar's already turned back on. Solar's only off for like 12 seconds. That is crazy. That is so crazy. Despite all that, though, these foundries are pretty hungry, so we are going to need still some more... some more solar and such. Um, let me... Find another good spot for this. Once we have cliff explosives, we'll work on clearing all this out. Technically, this does not mess with the worm's territory, so I'll just build it here. And... There. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get these names and games going. Gosh, we're already an hour into the episode. This is nuts. I feel like... Ah, there's just so much to do. I love Space Age. There's so much to do. Alright, so we're gonna call this the end of the YouTube episode. If you're here live, don't go anywhere. We're gonna keep streaming. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, for those of you future YouTubians, just a quick reminder to join the, the Cridania Discord if you're interested. We have a lot of fun over there. We chat about... Factorio and many other games, so if you're looking for people to chat with, they're just uh, a place to hang out. Come join us, it's a great community. Um, if you'd like to support me making these videos, please head over to patreon.com slash crydax. You can get things like ships named after you, or uh, name in game stuff. Once we do train stop stuff on Nauvis, which will be soon, TM. Uh, we're going to be naming a lot of the train stops after Patreon supporters, so there's just some fun fun perks like that if you'd like to support me. Um, and then apart from that, uh, what's the other thing I plug? Oh yeah, the podcast, The Factory Must Grow. If you're interested in a factory-related podcast, you can search for The Factory Must Grow on your favorite podcast provider, uh, and that's a podcast I've been doing for a while now. You get lots of guests on there, like Troopin and Michael Hendricks and... Uh, we had Dosh Doshington and Bold Viking and all sorts of, uh, we even had Rygard, um, so like mod devs, other content creators, um, we're slowly collecting all of them, so if you have any ideas for guests that I can invite, let me know there, or let me know on the Discord about that, so other than that, you guys all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next episode.